Hi, right, folks. Larry Wingett here. Wait for a couple of y'all to join me. We'll get started. As soon as you uh, sign in here, just give me a little howdy over there in the corner, and uh, at least it's in the corner of where I'm looking on the screen. We'll go from there. I always appreciate it when y'all join me on these deals. I know uh, you have a busy day just like I do, and uh, it's uh, always much appreciated when you do this. So there we go. We've got Paul. There you are, Paul, and Rita, and Pam. Uh, I see a bunch more of you on here, so say a howdy when you get over there. There's Bernie. Twice in one day. Paul, you're right. Do the Ultimate Business Summit. Come over here and do one... Uh, on mine, on uh, my topic today, on what I'd like to talk to you about. There's Cricket from the beach. Uh, Cricket is reading my book and Jane Jenkins Herlong's book. On the beach, so good. There's Stanley, great to have you. All right, we got a big crowd here. There's Dan and Dwayne and Keith Morrison and Curtis and uh, Amy and a whole bunch more. All right, here's what I want to talk to you about. I was doing a uh, interview this week. Oh, look at the big crowd now. Everybody's jumping in here. Brian and Todd, Brad, Lisa, Jay. All right, I was doing this interview this week, and a person asked me a question I don't often get. And it was, what would I be proudest of as I looked back over my life and my career? And I, I, I know speakers pretty well. Uh, I've been around a lot of speakers. And I just believe that most speakers, at least way too many, uh, would say, oh, well, I've written books, and I've made a difference, and I had a lot of impact on people's lives, and I changed lives and all that. And i got to say, I think all that's hogwash. Uh, I know, and, and this is what I told this person, I know that when I die and I am gone and I'm not doing this anymore, uh, I am absolutely positive that it'll take about a year for people to get worn out posting Larry Wingett memes. And uh, my books will quickly disappear from all the bookshelves. And I can just tell you, I know that my legacy is not a stack of books. And my legacy is not a bunch of memes. And getting quoted from the stage by other speakers That'll last just a couple of months until they realize I won't be around to sue them, and then they'll just start taking my stuff like it's their own, and they'll start using it. That's just the way it is, folks. Uh, I look at, at uh, a lot of big names in this business, and I, and I see what happens with their stuff, and it's happened over the years, and I just know that's how it works. So my legacy is not caught up in this. It's just not. I'm absolutely positive I, I don't change lives, and, and I've told you before that when people write me emails and say, Larry, you changed my life, I write every single one of those people back and say, I did not change your life, you changed your life, you did the work, all I did was possibly remind you that you could and give you a couple of tools so you could. That's it. So I don't have any grand schemes about uh, how I'm going to make such a big difference in the world. When I look at uh, Tina and Hiroko and Eric and Jeremiah, Steve, thank you for being here. There's Kirk. You're wrong. Your books will live on. Yeah, they'll be on shelves somewhere. They'll be on somebody's, uh, uh, you know, maybe you'll pass it on to your kids, but nah, it's not how it works. It's just not. Uh, books live on for about that long, and then new books come along and take their place. Creative borrowing, Keith says. Yeah, it's creative as long as you don't get caught. And then it's stealing. Um, here's what, and there's Alistair. He says, your legacy, the lessons you taught, common sense ownership, doing the right thing. Yeah, you're right. I hope so. And Brandon, and Chaz. And, uh, here, here's the deal, folks. When this person asked me my legacy, I went through what I just did with you. But I have no delusions about my impact on the world or my impact through my books or my stuff, and I don't even care. This has been a real honor for me to be able to share my opinions and all this, but my legacy, I have two sons. I have two grown sons. I've taught them well. Um, they have, between them, three sons, and those two sons are teaching those three sons well. When I look at my legacy, the only thing that lives on 
is what I have done through my family, my boys, my grandsons. That's why I value so much the opportunity I have to spend time with my grandsons. So they kind of get to sit on Pop's knee and listen to Pop pontificate about what he thinks is right and wrong and values and core values and standing up for yourself and how to grow a pair and how to be honest and do the right thing and treat people right keep your word and I make them do all those things. I just, I won't tolerate anything else. But I did that with my own sons and that's why they are the men they are today. And so I, I guess my challenge for all of you is to look at what you want to be known for. What will be your legacy? Why do you care about all these things that we get so caught up in? All the details. I posted a meme today about you know, one of the keys to true happiness, in fact, it may be the key to true happiness, is the ability to ignore the stupidity and the noise that surrounds it. My wife came to me when she saw me post that this morning, and she said the words that she liked were the noise that surrounds it. There is so much noise going on in the world. This is part of the noise. Social media, the crap we watch on television, the 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 minutia of things that, that people believe really matter. They don't matter. What matters is the big stuff. How are you raising your kids? How are you treating people? That's the big stuff. That's the stuff that lives on. Uh, Sandy says, uh, we talked about this the other day. Enjoyed your response, which is mine too. Peter Wink gives me a thumbs up. Uh, Paul Rosser said, you'll be too busy watching Elvis nightly in heaven drinking the best bourbon to care. <laughs> there you go. Eating fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches, which is they're actually really good. I had an Elvis party one time. That's what I served. Uh, Jerry says, hey, Larry, just standing in Albany. Another great American flight. I bet it was, Jerry. Uh, Eric says, Monday morning with the man, Larry. <laughs> I appreciate that. Steve, hi from Alberta. A lot of thumbs up there, Diane. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Steve. Uh, Pam, thank you so much. Uh, you'll be a great part of the future, says Keith. Raising good citizens who do the right thing even when people aren't watching. And that's integrity. That's what it really means. So this is going to be a short one today. I just think that we all get so caught up in some of the stuff that is never going to matter. And the stuff that does matter, that matter is what you leave behind for your children because they go on and they are your legacy. Uh, I, I posted a picture of my two sons uh, yesterday. I'm incredibly proud of them because my sons learned what honesty and integrity and doing the right thing, and they understood that there were consequences when they didn't, and uh, they understand that consequences drive behavior. I taught them that, and that's what I value the most of everything that I've done in this world. The biggest contribution I've made uh, are two sons and the impact they're going to have on their sons, and the impact those sons will then have on their sons. That's the only difference, folks, that we make. That's it. You know, my tombstone, I've always said my tombstone, I, I want it to say empty, all used up. I, I don't care about much else. I'm going to live my life to the very fullest. I, I, know, I know what I leave behind quickly vanishes into dust, and, and, and this is not one of those morbid things. It's really the... It's an, I, I'm say, stating this as an opportunity for everybody to stop and reevaluate and get your priorities right and know what really matters. And what really matters is not all the crap and the stupidity and the drama and the noise, as I talked about earlier, the noise that surrounds all of that. What really matters are the conversations that you have with the people you love and who are close to you and the people who you might have some small impact on. Those are the things that matter. And those are the things I wish that we would spend more time focusing on. I know that that's one of my goals as I age, is to reprioritize and, and, and get back to what I think is going to last the longest. And the only thing that lasts the longest is what you've taught your kids and what they teach their kids. That's what matters. Y'all are leaving great comments. We don't need to beat a dead horse on this uh, today, uh, and I'm not going to, and this is going to be a short one. But if you've liked this little message, uh, I would appreciate you sharing it because I think this is what every single one of us, I know I do, and I know you do too, and you know people who need to focus on what they're going to leave behind. They need to recommit to spending time with their kids uh, and teaching their kids the right lessons. And and living the kind of life that is an example to those kids because kids watch more than they listen, I promise.
I promise you. They watch more than they listen, and they learn from your behaviors. So be the kind of person that leaves the kind of legacy through your lineage that makes a lasting difference on the world, because you don't, they do, and they will pass that along. Hey, folks, I, I decided when I started this I was going to keep it at 10 minutes, and that's what I have done. I really appreciate it every time you sign on here. Again, thanks for all your great comments. I'll go through and read them and comment and give you some feedback there on the Facebook page. Share this video if you would. I think it's important. Thanks for being here today. Bye.